All right, we're gonna show you guys how super organized we are. Well, actually, this is the importance of organizing and uncluttering your life because the way that I work is very, very cluttered. So the process that I do right now is whenever I'm doing something for a client, I'll just do it all in a Google Doc. And as you can see on my tabs right now, I have probably, I don't know how many Google Docs I have open, but all of these are different. Every single one of them is different things going on for the Google Docs. And this stuff, it needs to be organized. It needs to be. Even though I'm doing a bunch of work here, when I then go to try and find this stuff later on, because I'm opening up 15, 20 different Google Docs per day, I ended up just trying to think of like, oh, what did I name this Google Doc and what's going on? And so there's tons of things, tons of work that I've done in the past that's now being non-utilized because I've simply forgotten about it because I haven't, um, I haven't been able to organize the process that's been put in place. And then if you were doing this at scale with instead of six clients, if there was 25 clients and there was a bunch of people managing all these different components, this is unacceptable when you're running a business. If you just have a high paying job, you can do stuff like this. But I'm trying to make the transition to actually running a process. And so PJ's right now, Hey, let me show you guys how I'm a little bit of a, a neat freak and organization geek. So it says the guy who has the same clothes on from last night. No, oh. no shower. <laughs> you don't have to expose me. <laughs> Forgot the deodorant. <laughs> <laughs> but it's because I'm so dialed in yeah. on getting this organized. But I mean, I've that, seen your room too, man. <laughs> <laughs> Could definitely be better. Could definitely dial in the room a little bit. <laughs> oh man. All right, well, check this out. This is, I showed Josh this this morning. This is not really what I use, but I, I just made this this morning as an example. Like, you can go into docs, and they, this must be kind of new, because I didn't see this before, but there's tabs. So this is one doc. You can go up to the top, title it, ideation stage, workflow, whatever you want to do it. And then, so, you can, under each tab, like, Okay, here's the personal channel videos. Here's the videos. You can put checks next to them as you go. Or um, here's Robert Kiyosaki's, Ken's, Ed's. And there's just one way you can organize that same thing. So it's just like one central spot to where you can find everything when you when you go looking. And then I'll also track your progress and know where you're you're lacking. Like, but I mean, this needs to go even go even further so that's why we're we've got this which I'm working on and as you can see here the, well the reason that you need this too is because there's also rather than just having the ideas for the videos okay here's the ideas and this you'll see okay well you start off with the umbrella so first it's the clients then you click on your client okay now we're on now we're on the personal channel videos here and then here's each video and then say I want to click on this video right here okay here's the process we need to go through to complete this video title thumbnail storyboard shot list editing posting that may not be exact but that's kind of like a rough idea of what it would look like and then you can check off as you go you can assign these tasks to certain people um, you can attach these things so so let's say we go to storyboard here. You can see on the right here, I have a document attached to where everyone on the team can go to to see, okay, here's the storyboard for this video. This is just a good way that you can track the progress for each client, for each video, and the components within each video so you know where you need the most work with. What also really, really matters is understanding what the priority is and yeah, what the most important task that has to get done is. What is the deadline? And then understanding what actually drives a revenue as well. In a lot of cases, you're doing things that don't actually increase production and, you're, and that, that's just time wasted. And so if you're gonna spend five hours working on something, you should at least understand what is the purpose of the work that you're doing. And having this organization allows you to know what are the things that actually needs to get done, what's the priority of them, and how is this actually benefiting you? Because at the end of the day, the goal of a business is to make money. And so you gotta yeah. figure out how are you making money from it. Yeah. And then it's also good too, because then once you have everything organized and say like, okay, 
I have everything up to date. I'm, a, I'm ahead. I have a week or two week leeway to where if I if I didn't come up with any ideas or, or do any of these this stuff that usually takes my time where I have to sit down and do it. Well, I have this two week leeway where I can focus on, okay, how can I improve what I'm doing? When it's just two, two people and then working with independent contractors, you can get away with this kind of stuff. Yeah, that's true. But it's a much different situation when you start to have different different components of your business in different compartments, and this stuff would be feasibly impossible to organize. And so there's a massive shift that has to undergo when you go from having yourself and then a bunch of independent contractors, maybe a bookkeeper, maybe someone full time. But going from that to going to having three different departments with managers upon those departments, if you don't have structure in place, there is no chance you are going to succeed in this. Yeah. And so that's the transition process that I'm trying to go through right now that me and PJ are working on. It's transitioning from being a high paying self-employee or being self-employed to trying to grow an organization that has momentum and can work if you're not actually there, because that does not happen right now. So this is just one component, but then you have the KPIs for employees, so so everyone actually knows what they need to be doing. So it's not just, oh, there's something undone. Someone will be a role that knowing what they have to get done. And then it's very clear what structures in place to know you can make data the bad guy. Is this or is this not getting done? If it's not getting done, why? We yeah. both mutually agree that this is what we said could get done from the workflow. And so what's the issue here? And then you make the data the bad guy and it's not you calling them out, it's you're, you're hard on the problem, soft on people. That's what Ken always uh, tells me. You, you have to, like the problem is what is what really matters and the work that is mutually agreed upon that can be achieved, Yeah. you're not hard on the person, but you're very, very hard on the problem. And I, I'm exceptionally hard on problems. And this stuff is actually incredibly basic. Every single business in the world that is functioning at a high level or even a C level is doing these types of things. The problem is it's you have to learn it for yourself. <laughs> it's actually, yeah. it's, it, it's not difficult because every business does it, but it's very, it, I think it's very hard. <laughs> uh, or it's, it's, it's simple, but very difficult. So how do you actually do this? How do you, because if I'm training someone, let's say, how do you train the psychology of what makes someone, how do you create urgency in an evergreen video? How do you uh, uh, psychologically make people want to click? And then how do you make them actually want to watch? There's so many components that go into it. And how do you train that? It's actually really, quite difficult and that's I don't have a great answer I would actually want to ask PJ how he thinks he's learned most from just hanging out with me every single day and how we do it because a lot of it's just gut feeling after a while uh, when you get so much data collected because I, I work with so many people trying to get clicks um, let's say kind of trying out different structures or so many different things how do you how do you train someone to be able to implement that kind of psychology? I, you, it takes one, it definitely, a, when I'm thinking of the content production, what, what does it look like? It takes definitely one creative who is going to be in charge of the idea for the video, the storyboard, the title thumbnail, and then ideas for what the back end editing is gonna look like. Then you have the person who makes the thumbnail, then you have the person who does the editing, who, rep who reports to that creative. But I don't know if that role is for everybody, that's that's the role that I definitely need help training on the most. And I think it just it takes a lot of time and a lot of reps and getting a lot of feedback. And then that person also will have to be able to give the editors tips and, and help them and help the thumbnail designer and give them a vision. That that's really the role. So if I'm making a content production line for my clients or for all these other things. You're gonna have one creative who's in charge of all the pre-production stuff. What's the what's the planning of the video? What's the storyboard? What's the title thumbnail? What's the hook? What's the end screen? What's what's all these components that goes into the video? And then actually think through what the editing looks like so the editor has everything in front of them and they just actually have to edit it. And the thumbnail designer just has to do what the creative said. And then that same creative is going to kind of review the thumbnail work, review the editing work and then it's submitted. And so that's, I would say, 
one creative could probably work on five different projects at once. You would have an editor for each project, a thumbnail designer for, let's say, one a, a thumbnail designer could probably do maybe, depending on how much volume's being produced, they could probably do like one per day. So they could be working on a few different projects. The editor's really just gonna be working on like one person's channel. In some, some channels you actually need multiple editors. And then the creative can do a few different projects at once. So this is how you organize this kind of, let's say an EOS org chart, which would be this person is in charge of these people. Um, and they're in charge of these people and these people. And that's how, how I think about making this kind of company vision, and it, it, at least in a few different ways. That, that's at least for one aspect of the company, for one of the, the vertical integrations that I want to incorporate. There's, there's a few other things. And so that, these are kind of the complexities that you have to think through for one, actually setting up the processes to training those people and getting them up to speed and then having them being able to manage and then training them so they can manage other people. Th that's just, that's why you get rewarded so much if you grow a business because it's, there's so many moving compart parts. And if you're solving a real problem, which the problem I'm solving, at least for this aspect of the business, it is helping someone advertise for their business for the lowest cost effective way and for the highest for the highest ROI plus the least amount of their time. Most people now see the value of having a, a brand and, or let's say if, if someone could get 2 million views a month for their business and let's say that business had a $30,000 ticket if you, from those two million views, if you could bring in 100 customers per month, because that's, that's not unreasonable, because people are quite literally opting in and choosing to watch a video that is an ad for your business, and that's a very small conversion, what is that going to do to your business? It's going to absolutely explode it, which is why I only work with people who are running real, like really large businesses where they already have, they have a product that's very good and they just need an advertising help. So I fulfill that version of their, of their problem. So what actually makes a video very clickable? Because what I'm, the, the, the biggest edge that I have is the psychological component that goes into the video. What, how do you influence human behavior to where they actually want to watch a video? And how do I use different AIs to, to help me come up with this process? What is the process of making a video with one of my clients? The first is, what is the idea for the video? What's the title thumbnail? What's the hook? Without those three things, I will never make a video with a client. And let me just go over an idea that I'm going over right now because we're going to Tijuana for these guys who have a cancer hospital as well as a stem cell hospital. So I'm brainstorming, what videos are we gonna make when we're actually there? So this one is, what makes cancer so hard to cure? So this is a video that is a proven outlier where there's multitude of videos on the subjects that have four plus million views. So the TAM, the total addressable market cap is very high. But how do you make it to where there's more urgency, more scarcity now to where people are gonna to have to watch it? And so in the thumbnail, I was going to, there's, a, since you can ABC test thumbnails, you can put three different designs, you're gonna try different psychological components. But in, in one of the thumbnails, it's going to be, we're running out of time with, let's say, um, a cancer strands or, or like a red blood cell or something and adding a bunch of different colors and graphic designs to make it look pretty simple, but also just very psychological. If you have the words, we're running out of time with a red blood cell in a person or some, something along those lines, that is adding an urgency to it. Because if, as a viewer, I'm thinking, all right, what, what makes cancer so hard to cure? And in the thumbnail, it says, we're running out of time, dot, 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 um, in quotes or something like that. Then you're thinking there is a new, a new version or something new that you don't already know that makes it to where cancer has to be solved soon. And if it's not, there's massive consequences to it. And of course, it's like th this is the psychological component that's going to add an additional layer to where someone who otherwise wouldn't be interested in a video like this is now interested in an evergreen video. So that's how you put a new spin on something and how I'm doing it with these guys. So now it's the storyboard process of the video. That is just an example 
title and thumbnail that I would come up with, and you're really just playing the probabilities with these things, I'm gonna let the data decide what is the best um, psychological avenue to go with the video, but at the end of the day, if you can't get someone to click, all effort is meaningless. It doesn't matter if you have the best video in the entire world if no one watches, but you also can't clickbait. So you have to then, once you understand the title and thumbnail and what the hook is gonna be, you can actually fill in the content to where you are proving why that video is the way that you, you promised it was going to be. So we have to make sure we add those components to the video. But if you don't start with the title thumbnail first, you're, you're pretty much screwed. And this is just, this is just one example. So I'm coming up with 10 different fully pre-planned out videos that we'll do for these guys around these kinds of topics. Another one is going to be how this medicine is magically healing people's injuries. That, that's the idea for the video. And, the, and the, 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 well, the idea is around stem cells and how, why are stem cells helping people's injuries so much, but you have to put a spin on it to where people are gonna want to watch it. So that's, that, that's the spin. That's not like a final draft, but that's the idea for the video. So how are you gonna craft that idea, a video on why are stem cells helping so many people in a unique way where a new market cap is gonna wanna be interested in it that is going to potentially get the most amount of views possible because my goal with all my clients is one, get as many views as humanly possible for their target audience and then how do I do it to where they spend the least amount of time on it as humanly possible? So I could make these videos, let's say a documentary with them, but that would involve hours and hours of their time. And I need to make it to where their life is easier because they're running a humongous business. So when you're thinking about these, what is the highest opportunity for the lowest amount of time that you can do and how can you craft it in different ways using different editing or voiceovers to where you can do this? And these people, we are doing more documentary style videos, so they're, it's gonna be very heavily edited. And so then it's, what does the content process look like? What are all these things? What are the components that will allow us to do everything that needs to be done only using an hour and a half of their time over two days? So we're gonna do 10 videos in, with three hours of filming. That's what we have committed. And all of these need to be planned out to the decimal to where me and PJ know what B-roll, what scenes uh, the, the guys actually need to be going to, to where um, we're not wasting any of their time. And that's why, that's the unique advantage that, that we have as opposed to someone else. Because I understand the goal of these people and I understand what moves the bottom line. If we could severely lower their cost to acquire customers, right now they get a lot of them through paid ads or referrals, but if they already have like a three month wait list, but if we could severely lower the cost to acquire customers and increase a lot more demand and increase their wait list, that would be worth a lot of money for these guys.